Yeah, well, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, I just I just wanted to open up the conversation really about how how good mm-hmm. is God? How how good do we see Him? And I just wonder if you've ever pondered on the first chapter in Genesis. After every creation act that God did, He mm-hmm. looked at it and said, "It is good." Yeah. And in English. That kind of, it's, it's sort of satisfaction. You can look at something and think, yeah, that's good. Mm. But that doesn't really convey what the father was saying when he said it was good. The, the root of the word tov, which is the Hebrew word used, is actually, this is worthy of celebration. Mm. I'm so overjoyed with what I see before me. I want to celebrate. And every day, at the end of every day, God was celebrating. I, that. I don't know how that makes you feel in your heart, but awesome. to think he's just it's incredible. incredible. Amazing. <laughs> Come on. Just let that sink in. <laughs> he looked at the earth and said, that's worthy of celebration. Hallelujah. And that was before he made humanity. And then <laughs> when he made humanity, <laughs> he rested. Well, there was celebration too. Yeah. That's a great celebration. <laughs> There's that comment. This is the day the Lord has made. Let yeah. us rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice and be glad. It's, it is, it's so good. It is all about rejoicing. Yeah. It's all about celebration. And... Yeah, in Job, it mentions that the angels sang for joy Mm. in the creation when God was making everything. The angels sang for joy. So he invited the angels into this great celebration. And this is the Father's heart for creation, is actually to seed it with his joy and his celebration. Woo! Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Just drink that in. <laughs> wow. It's so good. I wonder what, what kind of revelation have you guys got on God's God's goodness? What thoughts have you got? I've gone quiet. <laughs> Something oh. I've been looking at is the trinity and um considering christ in us the hope of glory yeah but it's more surely i mean we know that we ask jesus into our hearts we know the spirit is within us so the question remains where's the father Mm. jesus said father and i are one yeah therefore we haven't just got in a sense christ in us we have the trinity within us yeah. If we have the Trinity within us, we have the interchange between the Trinity flowing within us. Yeah. So the joy between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. is ever can bubble up within us mm. because it's ever present with us. Yeah. And the idea it's not just the form, it's the flow. Yeah. That's so good. I love that. I love the the idea of the Father in us. And I think that's that's going to tie in with where where we're going this evening as well with with his good pleasure and and the rewards of Jesus Christ. And yeah, I love that. Thanks for sharing that. Hey, Colin, I I love that picture, and I often think of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They never fall out, do they? They're mm-hmm. always in agreement. They're always in um, dancing together. And just mm-hmm. you know, if I'm feeling tempted to feel. Other than that, it's just that picture of them agree in agreement and having joy and dance the dance the three of them dancing together. Mm. I love that the fact that yeah, the reminder that the Father and the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Spirit in us. That's very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. I was looking into the the Hebrew and and the Greek for the word. You know, in John one one, where it says. And, and the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. 
And God just gave me this really beautiful picture of, you know, it's like the word, word is eternal. Once it's released, it's eternal. But the word can only be released by the breath, which is the Ruach. And every time we breathe, we're actually breathing like Yahweh, Yahweh. And so that for me is like the Davar, the Logos, is like the Trinity in one because you, you, can't, you can't speak the word without the Ruach. And you can't, you know, when you release the Ruach, the word, it's, it's the Father. Um, so, yeah, I think that's really beautiful. Wow. Good. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. I've been meditating um, over the last few days on the freedom that we have, that, that, that actually we are free to choose and, and, fr- and, and our freedom is no illusion. Mm. It's, it's, it's sober reality. We are really free. And, and that God, the goodness of God is that he wants us to love him mm. out of that freedom, yeah. but he doesn't coerce us. It's like, so what we, what we express in our love to him mm. is, it can be freely given. And, and, and that he, he's our father and he, he so delights it when our children choose, when, sorry, when his children uh, choose to love him in that freedom. Yeah. So, Pete, if we get it wrong, we can fall back on the fact at least we had the freedom to get it wrong. Yeah. yeah. And there's yeah. Grace there too. His grace. I love that, that verse in Zephaniah 3.17 where he said, The Lord is with you. He's mighty to save He'll take great delight in you. He'll quiet you with his love and rejoice over you with singing. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And that's just that he is, he is constantly rejoicing over us with singing. Mm. Whether mm. we're good, whether we're bad, whether we mess up or whether we get it perfect. It says right there, he is rejoicing over you with singing. Mm. Mm. Well, I, love, I love the thought that um, because he's so much bigger and so much more, you know, so, so, you know, awesome, and we are. It's rather like a, a parent with a, a little baby. You know, it doesn't matter how how how, how the baby can, um, you know, do something wrong, shall we say? I mean, you rejoice over it, don't you? You know, it, it doesn't matter how if the baby <laughs> doing something well or isn't doing something. It, it's 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 a delight. It's the delight that it's your yeah. child. It's a delight that it it, mm. it belongs to you. It belongs to you, and it's precious mm. to you. And I think mm. sometimes we lose sight of the fact the father yeah. loves us because we're his children, mm. and he he just he just delights. Rather as Lee was saying about delighting in the informing the you know each stage of the creation, he delights in us as his children. Yeah. You know, as his, as his, as his, yeah, as his sons and daughters. Yeah. yeah. He wants that interaction with us as well. Um, you know, that the God who created the world actually wants to interact with us, with me. Um, I just think it's amazing that he would want and, and delights in doing that. Yeah. And delight in, in the, delighting in him. Um, mm which is quite awesome, I think. <laughs> yeah. Just before we came on tonight, I um, I put on a, a, a song that somebody put on uh, for us to hear um, about walking on the water, dancing on the waves. And my biggest connection with him is to dance. That's my when I really come in deep with him. And um, I was just feeling quite ordinary and I thought I'd just put the song on before coming on tonight. And the joy was so, when I play that song, the joy is so big, it's hard to contain. Mm. And, and it, it just filled, it just filled the whole place. And um, I wanted to cry in joy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it was oh, so beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. it's still there. That joy is still mm. there. Yeah. With him. It, mm. It's so outstanding. He is so good that it doesn't matter where, where you are. Because as soon as you make that connection, that's gone, and you've got just pure joy. It's beautiful. Mm, yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah, 
Um, just a little story from when we went out for a meal just now for our anniversary. And my friend makes these lovely cards, like for, for charity and for in Uganda. And I thought, well, I'll take a few with me if somebody would want to buy them. So I, <laughs> <laughs> a couple of waitresses and, and, and one bought them. And then there's one, one that she's got, so Jesus, God's gift for us. And I just felt to give it to her as a gift to her, Jesus, um, God's gift for you. And she said, oh, thank you so much. I don't know whether she's a Christian or not, but she just loved it. And I felt such joy because it was God, God's joy, but, but her. And she was really excited about the, the, story, the little card about Jesus. So, that's, so people who don't seem to know Jesus, they can still be really excited about him. Yeah. Especially I, in this time, I think people are more open, really. I just want to pick up on yeah. something. You said it's your anniversary. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Wow. Yeah, I love all that. That is that is good stuff. And I, I just want to open up something um, to expand our, our thinking. Um, so if you think in the Garden of Eden, this is the garden of God's good pleasure, where he took pleasure in walking with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. He always spoke with them, he communed with them, and he gave it over to them to work and and to be in that garden. And in that garden, we know he placed the tree of the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we, we often focus on the evil, the knowledge of evil, that by eating that tree, we became corrupted. But in his grace, he also gave us the knowledge of good. Mm. And I just want to let that sink in, that we have in us the innate knowledge of good. Mm. but that wasn't enough for god he also set eternity the desire for the tree of life in our hearts so even though we have the freedom of choices as, as i said earlier to choose good or bad we also have a desire for eternity in our hearts mm. i mean how good is god that he would mm. he would in his foreknowledge know that there was a possibility Adam and Eve would choose the tree of knowledge of good and evil, mm. allow them to do it, but also in that decision, give them the, no the knowledge of good. Mm. I mean, that's, that's grace right there. Yeah, in that mistake, yeah. in that fall, he's still yeah. imparting his goodness into them. Mm. Mm. That, that's just grace. Mm. Amazing. Incredible. But it wasn't enough. He put a desire in us for eternity, for the tree of life. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and I just want to want to just expand on that as well, because um, in as it says that sin entered the world through Adam, and we see decay, we see destruction, chaos, we see we see its effect all around us, mm -hmm. and yeah, it also says in the word that God upholds everything with his word that he holds everything together that christ holds everything together so he in his love and goodness is still holding everything together mm. and that's that's absolute love that even though there's absolute rebellion against him mm. he still says i'm gonna hold you together i love mm. you so much because you are still the same earth that i created and i said it is worthy of celebration mm. I just think that's so incredible. And something that um, I heard recently, it was um, by Liz Wright, she said this, um, and I thought it was extremely profound, that it's something along the lines of that Jesus, he, he knows every tree that grows, he knows every plant that grows, every hair on our heads, he knows them. Mm -hmm. He knows everything. And when the seed of the tree that became the cross was planted, he chose to speak life, to cause it to grow, knowing on that tree he would die. Yeah. And I think that's just so beautiful. Yeah. The goodness of God is just, yeah. he, he decided to make that tree grow, knowing his destiny upon that tree. Yeah. But that was also the way back to the essence of the tree of life. And so for the joy set before him, he endured that suffering. Mm. And I think that is just, it's overwhelming love. Mm. Yes. 
Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> it's so reassuring that uh, God is in control, even though there is so much bad and chaos in the world, that overall, in the end, God has that control and he can use all the things that are happening to, to good in the end. Yeah. And that at this time with COVID causing so much havoc, to be reassured that he's there mm -hmm. overseeing it all and he knows what's happening is, is totally reassuring mm -hmm. that good somehow will come out of it all. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And I think we see that in John as well. I I've, I've just I can't remember where it is exactly, but um, you know, Jesus says, I chose you the twelve of you, even though I know that one of you is the devil. Yeah. You know, like that's a really harsh state, statement to say, but he chose, he chose Judas, yeah. even yeah. though he knew what he was going to do, even mm. though he knew he still chose him. Mm. You know, it wasn't like an accident that got, got in the group somehow. He was chosen by yeah. Jesus. And mm. yeah, I think that's amazing. Mm. That speaks volumes, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, I was looking at some of the autumn colours um, and... And I was thinking about how Jesus' death was at the one and the same time the ugliest thing that happened and the most beautiful thing that ever happened. And then I was thinking about how the autumn colours are a parable of beauty in death mm. that yeah. speaks of the cross in a way. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Good thought. Mm. What about what about the thought that love hurts? Mm. Do you want to expand on that a bit more? You make yourself vulnerable to others. You open yourself up to great joy and great sorrow. And for some, the 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 love. Is almost birthed in their hurt. I think it links to C.S. Lewis's quote where it says, if you want to go anywhere um, to get away from the cruelty of love, go to hell because it's not there. But to love is to be vulnerable. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the whole quote, but it is beautiful. <laughs> and for as much as we see love from our perspective, Consider where love, who love is, and how vulnerable, therefore, the father makes himself to us. In that he sent his son to die on the cross, that we, in our sinful state, could be rescued. Mm -hmm. it's... There's that vulnerability, but it's also the confidence in knowing, isn't there? Knowing who he is and knowing who we are. And I keep getting the, the verse about the wheat growing amongst the tares, you know, God allows, allows that's, that's how it, life is. Mm -hmm. That yep. the, 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 the good grows amongst the, the evil always. And he knows that it's not, he hasn't taken it by surprise. That's how it is. Yeah. Um, because of the confidence of the father that his, his people, you know, will stand and, yeah, follow him through it all. And I, yeah, I wonder if we can just um, expand on that a little bit. So, do you remember how that parable goes, Myrtle? Do you um, to... <laughs> put to be on the spot, Lee. It's all right. You can say no. I'll, I'll, I'll go uh, for it. Just now. remind me. I do, but yeah, yeah you go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Storytelling mode. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll paraphrase. So basically, Jesus. Um, tells a story about a farmer and he tells us the farmer is the father. The farmer has a field and his workers sow seed into the field and overnight the seed grows there are weeds that appear and the workers of the field say oh you know should we um should we tear up the weeds because they're going to choke the, the the seed we sown and they and they said we don't even know where these weeds have come from they've just appeared but the farmer which is the father. And Jesus tells us the workers are the angels of the harvest, of mm. which will gather in everybody. Mm. The father basically says, now, 
leave it as it is. Leave the good with the bad. Because if you tear out the weeds, you're going to harm the good stuff. So let them grow up together. And this is the dichotomy of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But this is the state which creation has been subjected to, that we have this, this parallelism of good and evil. And God is basically saying, you know what? I know the state it's in, but I've called it to a higher purpose in Christ. And that is the goodness of God, that actually under the reign of Christ, we can see the goodness of God permeating through all of that. So, and that you won't get that from that um, parable, but you get it from other scriptures. Um, the famous one with Joseph saying, you know, you intended this for harm, but God intended it for good. And in Romans, it says that God works in all things, mm -hmm. good of those who love him and he loves. Mm -hmm. And so we see that even though there is this, good and evil wrestling and tussling that has been introduced through partaking in the tree of knowledge and good of evil there is the tree of life that supersedes and says actually we speak life in this we bring the life of jesus you you can have good and evil right there but we're just going to bring life into it and when evil happens we're just going to speak the goodness of god we're going to seek the kingdom of god we're going to we're going to redeem and it says that we've become agents of reconciliation agents of yeah. redemption and this and it says that mm -hmm. jesus through his blood his sprinkling of his blood is has cleansed all the spiritual realms he has cleansed the heavenly realm so even in the beginning in the spirit it is cleansed it is restored it is redeemed it is reconciled to christ and so that can filter through if we choose to partner with the father and actually begin redeeming and restoring and reconciling the situations around us into God's goodness, into the good pleasure of the Father. And that's, that's amazing that he's entrusted that to us as his co-workers. That feels like the world today because there is good and there is evil. And mm. we are in the world to do God's work and to, mm. to just mm. restore it and, and make the good come mm. more evident and more important and somehow. Mm. That feels like just exactly what it is, the difference and the, um, yeah, the changing mm. thing between good and evil. But yeah. we have the overall um, control because in the end, it's God that's going to win. Because you've been given life by the blood of Christ. Yes, we are chosen. I've been reading a lot of the Old Testament and, uh, and the Jewish tradition, the, 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 the they bled, all the meat they ate has to be bled properly because the blood is blood, blood is life. And the Lord bleeding on the cross and uh, giving his blood to us is him giving us life. So the representation of the blood is him giving us life. Yeah. We are life, right. is the blood, life, our life in Christ is the, given to us by the blood of Christ. Mm. I think one of the um, biggest words that uh, I've just keep having through dreams and all sorts at the moment is that word transformation, that we are transforming wherever we go. I, yeah. you know, I got, it's such a weird thing that I'm feeling like yeah. heaven on earth is, is increasing through transformation, through us, through, the, you know, where the enemy wants dystopia, we are bringing utopia if you like and that's another dream he's given me and um yeah i, I feel i have a real revelation of that that yeah. transformation is happening but it could only happen as lee has said through the weeds being a, a, a rule around us because we then infect in the very best way <laughs> that around us we're, we're seeing it aren't we we're seeing it we're seeing it so if we have if we live in the knowledge of good and evil is it that we are being transformed and reconciled with the tree of life yeah so ultimately the tree of life um we have to understand what it represented so god said i mean they still adam and eve still had access to the tree of life after they ate the tree of good and evil and god saw this and said actually i'm gonna have to do something about this i'm paraphrasing a lot um because if they eat the tree of life they will live forever but they will be in this state of relying on knowledge of good and evil. And 
And so it's kind of like God couldn't let them eat of the tree of life because they had to be renewed and transformed into resurrection glory, which is the inheritance which we have in Christ, so that we are actually, our inheritance is immortality. It is that which we see from the tree of life. In the book of Revelation, it says that there are trees down the banks of the river that comes out and flows from the very temple of God. And the trees, they're, they're all trees of life. So there's not just one tree of life. There are many trees of life in there. And that's something which might, you might want to go away and ponder on and ask God why <laughs> there are many <laughs> trees of life. Um, but in this vision that John had, the leaves of the trees, it wasn't the fruit of the tree. It was the leaves of the tree for the healing, for the healing of the nation. And now yeah. healing doesn't mean physical healing from ailments. Healing in the true gospel sense means um, you're actually, you've actually got a true vine, a true branch or a true trunk. And it grows and it has a, you can think of it like a DNA blueprint. It has a designed blueprint for how it's going to grow. But if something deviates from that origin, the original design, it needs to be healed back in. So this is, this is the concept that everyone needs healing or that sozo wholeness that is the gospel word for salvation is talking about that healing back into true alignment with the father and his design for who we are in our identity in Christ. And so that's what the tree of life is about. It is about that true alignment into the father again but adam and eve couldn't have it in their state because it needed to be what had happened needed to be reconciled it needed to be reconciled to god and only pure blood could do that which is why jesus had to do it and he is the only one that could do it and that's, yeah. that's a whole other subject in and of itself um but that's that's my understanding of the tree of life and what it actually represents is that coming into true alignment with the father it's mm -hmm a symbol of his life that that we can yeah. all root into and take life from um, ultimately it is it is a symbol of jesus and the holy spirit the gift of jesus spirit to us yeah which is eternity the, the gift of eternity um, yeah sure. and the promise of heaven can I um, piggyback on what Myrtle was saying about transformation? Because I also think um, it's also almost like a metamorphosis, if you know what I mean. It's like a transforming from one shape into another. And um, it's a complete change. You're no longer caterpillars, you're butterflies. You're no mm -hmm. longer tadpoles, you're frogs. <laughs> You know, I mean, we're, it's, it's like, like you was saying with the tree of life, it's realigning us to who our true identity is. Mm -hmm. And I think is it second Corinthians 517, where it says that we are now new creations in Christ. Yeah. Um, and that, that root, I've heard that that root word in, in the Greek is actually, I think it's kainos, which means um, a whole new being that hasn't been before mm -hmm. yeah. and that's that's what jesus has done for us is that he has made us back into what we weren't yeah he's realigned us with the father yeah. amen that's awesome i just want to unpack that actually a little bit because um i think that ties in with with where i felt in my heart that jesus wanted this to go is that that new creation what is that new creation and i believe that the father revealed his heart in the old testament when he actually corrected the um the israelites when he said to them that they were spending all their money on their own houses they were building their own houses and he rebuked them because he said that my house is left to tatters my house is left to desolation well you build your own houses and he was like, you know, come build my house. And what is that picture of is what I ask God so much. And I see it as actually his heart is for his house and not building our own houses. So not building into the tree of the, 
of the knowledge in good and evil, but building into the tree of life, which is Jesus. And what is, what is this house of God that the father was so passionate about? Because we know God isn't so passionate about buildings. It's not about bricks and mortar because he is a God that's about people. And we know that as it was said earlier that the Trinity, when you invite them in to your heart, they make a home in your heart. And in Revelation, we know that Jesus says he's knocking at the door of our hearts. Mm. If we let him in, he, him and the Father will come in. Yeah. And so what I understood from that is that we are the abode of the Father. Mm. We are his house. Mm. And so that is the new creation that beforehand we could not house him. And we see the temple, the temple, the most holy of holies in the, the Jewish temple. You had to be extremely purified to be able to go in there. And even when the priests were extremely purified, they still had safeguards in case they were struck down dead in there because it's so holy. Nothing that's impure can walk in there and be in the presence of God. And yet, through the blood of Jesus, by faith, by grace we are purified it's, it's what jesus said he said you are pure because of the word i have spoken to you and we know the word as becky said is ruach which is the the root word for voice or spirit so by the voice or the spirit of jesus which is spoken to us or given to us through our, he's washed our entire being and he's made us pure mm. and then at the same time he says and now I will live in you. And that's his good pleasure, is actually to celebrate over us, as, as was said earlier, to sing over us with joy and to live inside us. It's his good pleasure to do that, that he is extremely pleased to be in us. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. So he, he has made us worthy of of that because of what he did for dying and taking our sins away we have become worthy yeah. of being um his his body yeah i had an incredible experience last last week i think it was the week before um i've been praying and fasting and I had this experience with the Lord where it was like I I couldn't I couldn't differentiate like where I ended and where Jesus began. It was like a, a oneness thing with him. It was really incredible. Um and and through that I he, a, a few different things happened. Um but it was all about the righteousness of Christ, you know, that that he is righteous and that as I was one with him, actually, I was, I was righteousness. And it was like, it was really overwhelming. But then something, um, I won't share the whole experience, but I kind of was taken into this vision, where I was kind of watching myself, if you like. And Jesus was there. And I was kind of knelt down at his feet. Mm. And to start off with, I was looking from above, you know, he was at the throne of grace and it was just, it, it was just light everywhere. And I was there at his feet and he had a scepter and it was like a crowning, like a coronation, like a celebration. And like, I didn't really understand it to start with, but as I was looking at myself from above, actually this robe that I was wearing, it was pure, it was white, it was you know, it just, it was holiness, it was purity, it was righteousness, as I was seeing it from that heavenly perspective looking down. But then he took me down to the earthly perspective. And as I was stood looking at the way that man would have seen, you know, from, from the ground, actually the robe that I was wearing was brown and tatty and mm. it represented humility. And mm. I just really felt in that experience, you know, that God was just reminding me that, you know, Jesus was a servant that he came to serve, that he came to, to build up God's people. Mm. And, and from an earthly perspective, humility actually can 
it can almost look like failure. It almost, it's something to be shunned. It's something to be, you know, despised, but actually from the perspective of heaven, you know, that's, that's purity. That's he, he's seeing us through Jesus because Jesus is perfect humility. Um, and yeah, it was just, just a really incredible experience for me to kind of, you know, cause I've heard it so many times. Oh, you know, I am the righteousness of Christ, but to actually have that tangible experience mm. with him where, yeah, I can't, I can't even explain it, but you know, it's like, you feel so unworthy, but at the same time it was like, but I'm worthy because he is worthy, mm. not because of anything that I can do, mm. but because of who he is. And if I'm one with him, then I get to take on all that he is. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if we are the, the abode of God, where God has chosen to make his home and he lives every moment in, in each of us, we cannot be anything but righteous. We cannot be mm. anything but holy. We cannot be anything but pure. Mm. Because it's not based on our thoughts it's not based on our actions it's based on him choosing to be inside us mm. so while he is inside us his very presence makes us pure and it says that his holy spirit is renewing us inward moment by moment day by day it is a perpetual renewal because he has to renew us in order to live in us he has to keep us in that perpetual state of being united with him as one in spirit that us and god are so closely knit yeah that he perpetually keeps us in his life mm. perpetual life mm. glorious glorious it's wonderful yeah but if we don't ask for the holy spirit to come into our lives we by default go back to our um, natural state of being bad, <laughs> wanting to do the wrong thing. So it's kind of, we need to be transformed every day and renewed because otherwise we would go back again. So we depend upon that infilling of the whole spirit to be where God wants us to be. Mm. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's a sorry. I love that verse in Romans where it says, We reign in life by receiving his abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness. I just love that so much because it's a gift, isn't it? Righteousness. Mm. Mm. Can't earn it. Yeah. Mm. I think we have to fight for the position though of staying in this goodness of God. And I think it is because we are mixed in with the weeds, the whole culture is we're in a real f a culture of conflict, aren't we? And um um also, you know, there's the whole tree of the false tree as well. Um very often I find myself just having to, you know, yeah, deal with the false tree in my mind. Um, but I think, it, yeah, it's a free gift and everything, but there are times when we just have to use our imagination. And this is just a practical thing, which I find really helpful mm -hmm. um, to use my imagination, to imagine this absolute luxury, you know, I'm living as um, I really am a princess and then have to then I go into that whole thing well what would that look like you know oh it would look like I could just sit back and I just say oh can you do this for me please you know can you do that you know can imagine we can use our imaginations but the truth is that is that's the reality it's such an extraordinary difficult concept sometimes to get hold of isn't it because of everything around us and I do think that's how I find it I I sometimes get to that position where I can really get it <laughs> mm -hmm. in a very minimal way <laughs> I, I've yeah. been looking a lot at um, creativity and how and it starts with imagination and often artists will refer to the imagination as the womb and God can place and we can exercise our imagination and that will lead us to desire which can lead to our thinking which can lead to our beliefs which can then lead to our behaviours, which can then lead to our habits, which then lead to fruit. 
So actually, I think the imagination is really important. And I guess for, uh, for me, the greatest area of imagination, which is not filtered by myself, is probably dreaming where God can tap in straight into my imagination. And, um, but sometimes we have to train ourselves to imagine glorious thoughts and courageous thoughts mm. and um, beautiful thoughts. And, and I think often we, we forget about that. Mm -hmm. And actually, God reveals reality in our imagination. And it's really interesting, Becky, because I had an experience with a scepter. It takes me back to Queen Esther, mm -hmm. where the king put down his scepter towards her and, mm -hmm. and the idea of a coronation. And actually having that in you, you had a vision of that. Um, but sometimes even just when you allow God to let your imagination run and fly with that it just in your core it gives you a firm foundation of actually his reality um which might not be what it looks like with all the weeds and the wheat around us yeah. I, I think, think that's, that's a bit girly. sorry someone was talking sorry go you on. go ahead it's fine you go Cool. I, I think that that's amazing. And I think um, I just want to launch from that into the next thing, which I felt Jesus wanted us to just open our hearts to, which was heavenly rewards and how the rewards of heaven work. And I just, um, I just would love a bit of permission to share a spiritual experience I had. Um, some of you know me and, and some of you don't. So for those who don't, and for those who are listening, um, I've had the privilege of being taken by Jesus into spiritual experiences where I've seen the heavenly realms. Mm -hmm. and he's allowed me to see some of the mysteries from a heavenly perspective. Um, and so I just wanted to share one of those really, um, by all means, weigh it up and, and you can choose to discard it or choose to um embrace it and i just always encourage you to sort of just wrestle with it and be be thinking okay what what part of this is is god in and what part is is not god and and just to test it um but there was this one time when jesus had taken me in the spiritual experience and i was walking into my house which he was preparing for me in heaven and as I walked in, I saw my personal angel, and he was in the kitchen area. And there were a lot of other people in the, well, people, angels, and other um, heavenly beings in the dining room. And um, there was a great celebration happening, as, as we know, God loves to celebrate, and <laughs> he loves a good party. Um, and they were just really happy. And there was someone from the cloud of witnesses who was sitting in between the kitchen and the dining area. And he, he was polishing this metal object and it looked like a precious, precious stone or a metal object. I could not tell it's glimmering in the light. And I asked him, I said, what, what are you polishing? Where's this come from? He said, this is a heavenly reward that has just come in for you and we're preparing it for you. And I said, well, wh where has this reward come from? Because I, I don't recall anything that I've done that's particularly good. And he, um, he didn't answer me. He just finished polishing this object and put it into a mm -hmm. cupboard type thing with many other objects in. And he said, take a look at all the objects. And I took them, they were each different, each unique, and each beautiful, and they look precious. And he said to me, each one of these rewards is unique for you because when he said this one, this particular one has come in because you have wrestled in your heart with something difficult and you have overcome. And so the very wrestling that you have done to overcome a difficulty and come into the presence of God and surrender your heart to Jesus has given him such good pleasure that he wants to reward that long suffering. And so that long suffering had manifested into a heavenly reward. And my understanding of spiritual substances like those precious rewards is that they 
they are stored in one form and can transform into another form in the spirit realm that are released for provision into our lives or grace or something in a time of need. And we see that it, as an example in the scriptures where um, there was a, a lady who um, alms and gifts to the poor had gone up as a monument before the Lord. And he had returned that with a, a blessing upon that person. So the, this is a, a mechanic I understand of heaven is that our long sufferings and our wrestlings and our overcoming and just perseverance actually produces for us a reward. And there, there is that spiritual principle in, in the New Testament letters as well that talks about long suffering, talks about patient endurance and talks about reaping that reward. And it talks about running the race that you might get the trophy, the reward. And I don't know what sort of revelation the New Testament writers had with that, but I believe that it is connected somehow into what Jesus said when he said that he goes ahead of us to, pre to prepare a place for us. What does preparing a place for us mean? It doesn't mean just allocating a space in a parking lot to say, yep, that is their allocated space. I'm reserving it. It is actually adorning and beautifying a place and constantly bringing rewards into that place for us that we may enjoy for eternity. And so, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. Beautiful. Can I say something about rewards in this life? Sorry? Uh, um, can I say something about rewards yeah. in this life? Yeah, I do. This is how I think he rewards us. I mean, I was, uh, my uh, step-grandson has been had a really bad accident and he's got suffering dreadfully from concussion. He's, for two months, he's been able to stand. And uh, I had this, uh, I was praying for him and I had this, vision of the Lord lifting down his cloak to him uh, and the, you know, the, the woman who touched his cloak in the Bible and was healed that he was he was like he was lowering his cloak for him to uh, to touch so, I, so I, I, I was left thinking well it sort of came to me a while later that what he was saying was that James made to make the first move and then he would be healed that his healing would come through through James's move and his parents are pretty anti-Jesus. Anyway, we went down there today and we gave him a youth Bible. And he was overjoyed to have it. And, uh, and, and that's, the, you know, that's the Lord's reward in this life, isn't it? That, that you see his, uh, what the Lord wants being manifested in that situation that's right? so unexpected. And, uh, James said, oh, that's cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> As kids would. And his face lit up. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> and that kid is still in a wheelchair after two months of concussion. He's really suffered. So, yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> it was the joy for us. It was our reward to see him yeah. Yeah, on the way yeah, yeah, to getting lot, better. You yeah. Know, yeah, it was fucking very Yeah, your rewards in heaven. Yeah. I hope that's uh, I hope that's next to the room of my house in heaven. <laughs> I hope he's polishing that jewel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we get the reward now, don't we? Because we see we have so much joy at, at seeing that uh, miracle happening. But God is rewarding us here and now. And, and, and his joy when he, the, the, the joy we feel when he answers our prayers, it feels like his joy is a million times greater than that. Because he always rewards it more than you ever expected, doesn't he? He always does it that bit extra. And you're thinking, oh, that was awesome. But really, the Lord is just uh, overjoyed at your, at, you know, like you talked about the children, uh, rewarding his children. And seeing his children happy is such a huge reward to him as is our children being happy when when we reward them. And, and the, our joy is so much greater than theirs, really. And the Father is just the, it's the same with the Father. You know, his joy is so much greater than ours through, through, through rewarding us for our... Uh, you know. um, it's God's abundant love, isn't it? Not just love, it's abundant love. And that is so wonderful that he has so much abundant love to give 
I think he doesn't just give gifts so when, as a reward. I think he's a generous gift giver, full stop. Because he doesn't just give when we deserve it. I think he gives despite that because he loves us. And, and I, I think that's the same for in heaven. And I think it's the same for here as well. And I've often found when I've had... Um, when I've had issues and I've had people pray with me and releasing me of certain ties and stuff that has weighed me down, God pretty much every time gives me a gift, not mm. because I deserve it, but he gives me a gift. So um, recently there have been some lies said about um, myself and I, had, I, I allowed fear to get in the way. And thankfully, my friend scooped me up and we prayed together. <laughs> and as a result, he gave me a badge that I wear. <laughs> yes, you can't see it, but I can and he can. Yeah. And that gift is so important. And to hold on to those gifts. Mm. And I think that's about the transformation, which you were talking about. <laughs> You know, when we realise the gifts that God is giving us and we acknowledge them and we live with those gifts, mm. that transformation appears. And yes, Becky, it might look like a brown garment from people around us. But when God looks at us, he sees us as how he is dressing us and, and how he's creating us. And it is totally beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think the, there's a bit of a culture within the church. Um, and I'm talking very generalized that, you know, our rewards are in the future, um, which is all very nice, but we never have any other expectation. Mm. Um, and I just really feel that God showed me this recently too. I mean, I've known it in my spirit for many years, but he's, he's kind of shown me it properly. Um, I suppose as I've opened my heart. Um, you know, I mean, he, all the, all the teaching about asking you will receive, that's the now, that is the here and now, um, you know, Holy Spirit was given, but there is a down payment as well. So there's a whole, what we've got of the Holy Spirit is now, isn't it? Mm. But also there's got so much more to come. Mm. So I just think theologically and biblically, I, I always like to earth everything in biblical truth and, and being really careful. I think it's so we our rewards are now our, i want to say this even prophetically our rewards are now he says ask and we will receive seek okay. and you will find he's not talking about when we're in heaven and it's uh, it's lovely to hear it in the, from lee and you know hear this lifted up mm. because for a lot of people this is really a, a new understanding and quite fresh really um you just live differently don't you do you think lee you live differently um if you know that you're just being rewarded being heaped with gifts you live differently you live with joy you live you feel good about yourself you know when people bring you presents you just go oh oh you know something just goes oh i feel really nice it's that kind of thing isn't it so there we are i just thought i'd throw that in what I love is that it's personal and it's intimate. I, I had a word um, a, few, a couple of about, almost about three years ago, that God was going to show me his fun side. And, um, and I wondered, what, well, what, what, what did that mean? And, and shortly afterwards, I, I, I'd, I'd commented on a picture on Facebook, which related to my childhood about a train going through through a, a park where I used to go as a child and it was a steam engine and this was a, a, a you know a, um, a steam engine in modern times going through but still a steam engine and I made a, 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 a nostalgic comment on it and out of the blue I got a parcel through the post and I still don't know who it was from of this picture in a frame just for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was I was so blessed. I thought, you know, this is the Lord, Lord you, you know, it was, it, was the, yeah, it was the steam engine. Um, and then and then um, that was followed later by a, a second one. And 
I was just so I was just so overwhelmed that, that you know that God would be so gracious as to give me something which was you know so um, in a sense sentimental, but I mean meaningful to me, but also um, such a gift, such a, 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 a unexpected gift, um, and such a such a delight. And I still don't know to this day who, who sent these two two. Uh, I, I've got them in my conservatory, so when I look at them, I say. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's such a such a lovely Ebenezer stone for me now that, yeah. that I have this recollection of of how 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 intimate our Father is with us. Mm -hmm. He knows he knows he knows where our hearts um, mm -hmm. are located, mm -hmm. and he meets us where where they're at. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I just want to. Um, just dive into that, what you've just said, actually, about that, that intimacy with the Father that we have. Because we know that we are in Christ, and we've, we've discussed about this perpetual life, and that we've moved from the realm of knowledge of good and evil into the realm of eternal life. And we have the Father living in us with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, all abiding in our hearts, making their home inside us. And yet that is not enough for God. He wants more. And so it says, Jesus told us that it is God's good pleasure to reveal to us the mysteries of heaven. Come on. So that is where yeah. awesome. we find his good pleasure. Yeah. Is when we seek him and we per persevere into those yeah. deep Come mysteries on. of the Father. And it says that the Holy Spirit takes from the deep things of God mm. in his heart and reveals them to our spirit. Mm. And this is the goodness of God that he says, okay, so I've redeemed you. I've restored you. I've put my spirit inside you. Now let me reveal to you my secrets that the Ooh. angels long to look into and are not permitted. <laughs> they are reserved for you, for wow. me and you. Wow. And that is the ultimate goodness of God, is that he wants that intimate, secret relationship with you. Yeah. So no yeah, we were talking, oh, go ahead, sorry. Go on, go on, Becky. I was going to say, yeah, me and Lee were talking about this the other day when we were preparing, and um, we were just talking about um, in 1 Corinthians 3, where Paul's talking about, you know, building the church and... Um, and then 1 Corinthians 4, the first verse, I found this afterwards and it says, so then you must perceive us not as leaders of factions, but as servants of the anointed one, those who have been entrusted with God's mysteries. The most important quality of one entrusted with such secrets is that they are faithful and trustworthy. Mm. And I just love that because when we were sort of thinking about doing this topic, for me, I was thinking, oh God, like, I'm not really motivated by a big mansion, you know, I'm not, I'm not really motivated by, by power or authority over cities and nations in heaven, whatever that looks like, you know, and I, I was really kind of just journeying that with God, like, I'm, I'm a relational person, I'm, I'm a quality time person, I like to know people, I like to know their hearts, I like to, you know, really spend one-on-one -on -one time with people. And I translate that to my time with Jesus as well, you know, so I can spend a lot of time, just me and Jesus, just going into the scriptures or just spending time with him. But I realize, you know, that that's what motivates me in my relationship with him is it's intimacy with him, you know, and it, it's like those who are trusted with a little will be given much. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I've really in this journey over the last few months is, you know, I see, I do have visions and, you know, things quite often, but I wasn't necessarily valuing them or, you know, I would sort of hold on to something for a long time rather than just being open to receive the next thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been a missionary for four years, so I've been living by faith for the last four years, just trusting God to provide. And something that I've learned in just, you know, in, in physical provision you know, it's like that analogy. If I'm holding on to the little money that I've got in my hand, I haven't, I can't receive anything because my fist is tight, you know, yeah. but if I open up and I give away what I have, then my hand is open to receive more. Mm, so you know, And this is something that, 
you know, that's a practical thing that, that I've learned on this journey with God. But actually, for me, you know, in this season right now, is it's like, no, I want more. You know, I'm not satisfied with, with what I had with yesterday's manner. You know, I want fresh manner. I want fresh experience. I want to go deeper in his heart. And for me, that is the reward. You know, it's, it's a, and yeah, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you know, I just think it's such a privilege to be trusted by God with these mysteries, you know, and like Lee said, like the angels, they get to be, some of them get to get to literally be in the presence of God and they still don't have, they don't understand the revelation of salvation because they've never fallen. So they don't know what it is to be fallen. Therefore they can understand the mystery of salvation that we get to experience. And yeah, I just find that exciting. Um, I just want really to, just going to quickly jump onto we're talking about imagination and talking about the you know running the race and and the endurance um you know and for some so i i actually ran a couple of marathons a few few years ago now you know i did that i did the training and one of the things that you had to do is you had to imagine the finish line you had to you know and and so for example when i would run a five kilometer what's that three miles i think if I knew the course and I knew, you know, how I was feeling, I could tell you probably within five seconds how fast I would run that race because I was so, so accustomed to it, you know, but to run a marathon, you, you have to train, you have that discipline, um, you know, and that's really helped me in my walk with God because it's not a religious thing for me, but it's, you know, there's disciplines, there's things that I can do that will get me closer to God. You know, like for me, praying and fasting is, is something that, you know, I have amazing time with that. I like to get up early and, and pray in tongues and, you know, obviously reading the word, this kind of, these kind of things. But there's, there's discipline and there's religion. Mm. I think for me, I know when I'm in religion because I'm doing it out of duty. Mm. But when I'm doing it out of a place of hunger, you know, and it's, you see him, you see the prize, you know, and so it is, it's it, that imagination, but it is endurance, you know, because I know for me, there's been times when I have maybe had an expectation of something that would happen. And actually God's given me something far better, you know? So the imagination is, is a great place mm. to kind of help yourself get focused but it's always just keeping, or for me, you know, keeping my mind open and mm -hmm. God, what do you want to teach me through this? Because if I keep focused on what I want to see, I might miss something glorious that he has for me. So. Right. The degree of revelation that you younger ones, uh, Becky, Lee, are walk, walking in, I just, honestly, I could jump through the roof. I get so excited because um, I, I see God is moving across the generations. But I think there's a real danger for us that have been walking with the Lord. I mean, for me, nearly 40 years that um, Pat and I have traveled a lot. We've seen a lot. We've seen miracles. We've seen so much that we can get that we think we know it. And God's asking us to, to really humble ourselves and say, I want to sit at your feet and learn. What, you've only been a Christian five years, 10 years, whatever. And I just see this, there's so much to learn from one another. And I think when I hear you pouring out your stories of your revelation of how, you know, you're living before God and these heavenly encounters and this, you're just living in this in eternity as we should, as, as you know, sons of God, daughters of God. It's just so, it just gets my spirit so excited. So great. If I, um, I don't, I hope you don't mind me sharing again, but I just felt like I should share this. Um, I, this kind of happened, you know, I've been doing this heavenly stuff maybe for about 10 years, but I found it such a conflict because I, I, I couldn't quite see how it could work with being in the, 
surrounded by people who are not in this at all. This just like a completely different out, a way of doing things and outlook. And I felt like almost like it was, I was just floating around and I didn't quite know. But I must say, I, all I can say is that word transformation again, because I, because of sticking with this, but relating it to heaven on earth, heaven but on earth the culture now in amongst the weeds um i have seen complete absolute transformation in my family um it, yeah uh, yeah i won't go any into any, any detail but i'm seeing transformation wherever i go it's, it's become un i can understand now i can understand why why god's re revealing these mysteries it's not just for me to to have an exciting time because I've never found it exciting. I've always found it almost overwhelming. I don't know if anybody else found it. I found it more overwhelming than anything else. But now I understand mm. because it's transforming, transforming wherever I go. And for me now, uh, it's so exciting, you know, seeing people healed and coming to the Lord and just lives, just yep. whole, whole swathes of my life being transformed is um is the reality yeah i love that and that that actually uh, i'm glad you shared that mental because that hooks into exactly where i felt jesus wanted us to land this and it's in um it is it, this is this is the ultimate goodness of god it is it's in psalm 2 verse 8 it says ask me and i will make the nations your inheritance the ends of the earth, your possession. And that is how much God actually desires both the nations and the entire earth. He desires it so much that he's saying, this is ultimately about Jesus. He's saying, Jesus, ask me and I will make this your inheritance. I will make this your possession. I will love these people. I will put my spirit in these people i will live among these people if this is what we desire as a trinity then we will so make it happen and we will go we will go with the passion through the crucifixion through the resurrection through the ascension and we will pour ourselves out into the hearts of all these people come on is the goodness of god is that he's put that commission into us it's not about numbers it's not about great power and great authority of oh, in my ministry or that ministry. It's actually about seeing each other as a house of God. It's about seeing each other where the Father is living now. So that when we look at each other, we're seeing where Jesus has chosen to live. Wow. Jesus' spirit is in the dwelling. Incredible. So if you look at all of our faces here, this is where Jesus has chosen to live. This is the house of God that he is building. This is his ultimate goodness, is that he is making us his inheritance. He is constantly building us into his household, into his beautiful, glorious house. And that is not enough. Just as Bertel said, he is using us to transform culture. He is using us to transform this earth into a more beautiful place. Death is not reigning. The life of Jesus Christ is reigning through us so that in all things we reign, just as Julia said earlier on, in all things we reign in life. Hallelujah. This is the goodness of God that he saw everything as it is. Yeshua. 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 It is worthy of celebration. Mm. I want to pour my spirit into it. I want to redeem it. I want to transform it. And I want to bring it up to my standard of celebration. Hallelujah. Glorious. Hallelujah. <laughs> and right here, we actually have the nations represented because yeah. we've got Jeanette and Linda from the US. Yeah. We had uh, Mama Solange before from Cameroon, and she's dropped off, I think, but yeah. I'm going to send her the link. And we've got people from Brazil as well that, that haven't been able to make it. Um, you know, so, so we're already representing the nations, and this is only the second conversation. Oh, sure. Um, you know, but what I love about Psalm 2 as well, you know, is that the world is, is plotting its, its evil, its, its schemes, and, and God just mocks. Mm. He just laughs. Mm. 
Mm. And he's like, no, <laughs> you just don't get it, you know? And you know, that Psalm 2, 8 is, is my verse. Ask me for the nations and I will give it to you for your inheritance. Um, but yeah, I just think that's, yeah. it's, it's really exciting what God is doing right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was thinking you could almost paraphrase Psalm 8 with God saying, get a life. Psalm <laughs> 2. <laughs> think about it. <laughs> Psalm 2, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stuff mm. just aware of the time does does anyone else have anything on their heart they want to share um just as we've been talking i keep getting a picture of just um a well which is quite interesting because i'm interested in wells anyway but that's by the by <laughs> um and in israel some of the wells they just look very normal on the outside. But actually, you can go down the well because you have to get down when the water is low. And there's steps that go all the way around the inside of the well. And I can just see people walking down the steps, going deeper into the well, which I guess is like a secret place, um, to get the water, which is obviously very precious because it means life. So that's... What I've just been getting. I'll draw a picture of it. It'll probably explain it much easier. <laughs> but I haven't got the time yet. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Mm. Hey, can you say a bit more about the mysteries of heaven, please? Yeah. Um, the mysteries of heaven. I'll try and summarise the mysteries because there are so many. It's <laughs> uh, and I'm learning every day. Um, they are things which the Father, is, it says in, in the Proverbs that it is the glory of God to conceal the matter, but the glory of King to seek it out. And the, the secret there is that we have been made royalty in Jesus. We are kings in terms of statehood. We are kings in Jesus, each of us. And so it is our glory and our right as children of God, to seek out the mysteries of the Father, the secrets of the Father that he has concealed. Mm. What does it mean that he has concealed them except that we should seek them out earnestly? Mm. And so these mysteries, um, they can be anything from deeper revelation of the scriptures to an understanding and an un, uh, a revelation of how the angelic realms work, or as I shared earlier, how, uh, how one aspect of rewards work um and a lot of the mystery actually pertains to jesus christ and his love for us it all reflects back to that it all points back to jesus and it just i find that the deeper i go into the mysteries of the father the more in love i feel with him and the the deeper it draws me into his heart and i just want to know more and often um i'll be vulnerable here i'm often sort of talking talking with angels or angelic beings will appear to me and i'll be taken into the heavenly realms and and be having encounters and i will actually say to them i actually just want to go be with jesus like i appreciate what you're showing me but i just long for jesus i want to be with him i want to be in the mm -hmm. throne room and and these this this is um a set of conversations that we've planned as well is to explore those those realms of God, the throne room, um, the resurrection glory of Jesus and the presence of God and baptism of the Holy Spirit in the heavenly realms and what that actually looks like and how the presence of God is so manifest and how the angels work with God and are drawn to his presence. And all these things are mysteries to us. And yet they're actually embedded in the Holy Scriptures they are there um we just need to constantly ask for depth of knowledge and insight just as solomon did he he said you know give me wisdom give me depth of knowledge give me insight mm -hmm. and the proverbs encourage us time and time again to seek knowledge to seek wisdom to seek yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it says um that wisdom it likens wisdom to a a woman and wisdom has four other beings at her side 
knowledge, discretion, um, prudence, and there's there's one other which I've ashamedly forgotten. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but these these things are mysteries of God, and and even Proverbs eight and nine, if you if you look into that, it tells you the secrets, the mysteries of how governing over cities work, and how actually reclaiming a city for Jesus works. It's right there in, in there in the, the Proverbs, in those two chapters. It's all about wisdom, the city gates, the ancient pathways, the four beings that wisdom actually draws to her side. And at, by those, you see later in the Proverbs and the Psalms that by those four beings, kings govern and rule and bring peace to a city. And so these are the deeper mysteries of God that actually it's all about engaging with what God has got in the spirit realms to manifest his glory here on earth. And it's just, it gets me so excited. <laughs> it, it seems like so much of what you're sharing, I'd read as metaphor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I, so did I until I started to, um, Jesus started to, to introduce me to these spiritual beings as beings. And I would question where, where in scripture can I get a reference for these, for these things? And I started searching the scriptures for what I had seen and I found these verses and I was reminded of them again. Um, mm. And I started exploring. And as, and as I explored these scriptures, I found that actually the experiences could be anchored in those scriptures and that there was actually a deeper meaning to the metaphorical um, understanding. And it's, it's interesting because the um, one of the ancient ways of looking at scriptures is to say they have four layers. The first layer is um, almost like uh, I, I might get this wrong. So, you know, test what I say, um, but it's almost literal. So you can read them literal. They are narrative. They are historical and they go through layers of metaphor and a, a lesson told through a story. And it may not be a real story. It's just actually there for a lesson. And then the, the deeper layer is actually mystery. And, and that's, that pertains to what Jesus said by it is the God's good pleasure to reveal the mystery of heaven to us, the mystery of the kingdom of God. And he's saying, you've got to go through the layers of scripture. You have to understand the deeper layers to understand the mind of God and, wow. the, heart of God. and the mystery is in there. And that's in the scriptures. It's not in um, experience. It's not anywhere else. It's a, he's actually saying, you know, the mystery of God is, is in the purposes of God is in the revealed word of God. It's, mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah, it's, it's all there. It's, but we've got to just press in and press in and press in and say, God, show me the deeper meaning of all of what you're saying. Yeah. So, 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 so Lee, when you said to the heavenly beings, actually, this is great, but I really want to be with Jesus. Did they take you to him then? Yeah. Well, it's, um, my heart went to Jesus and then ah. I'm in the presence of the father and I just rested in his love. Um, ah. and, and sometimes, um, sometimes I'll go direct into Jesus's presence. Other times I will be walking elsewhere and Jesus will be with me and he'll introduce me to other heavenly beings. Mm. Um, and sometimes I'm, I'm happy to engage with the, the mysteries they want to show me. Um, mm. And, you know, I'm only permitted to go there by his Holy Spirit anyway. Mm. So, um, but sometimes my heart is just so yearning for Jesus that I say, actually, I, I just really need Jesus right now. Can mm. I go to him? Okay. Oh. <laughs> but oh, with, that's lovely. with Heavenly Protocol, there, there's always a, an asking a permission and grace as well. So just because you, you turn something down doesn't mean God's not going to show you enough time. Yeah. And that's the grace of God. And he says, okay, you know, that's fantastic. You want to be with me? That's fine. Come be with me, my son. I love you. We'll show yeah. you another time, but I really want to show you because I really enjoy sharing my secrets with you. <laughs> and, and so it's, it's, I know that some people get, have, have got hurt by longing for Jesus and just wanting Jesus and have turned down the experience. And then this guilt has, has sunk in. And mm -hmm. if any of those people are watching, I just want to say that actually there's no room for guilt because God's love is just like, you know what, whatever you want, I'm going to give it to you because that's what Jesus said. He said that before you even ask, the father knows what you need and he will give it to you. Mm 
Mm. And that's, that's all around the Lord's Prayer, if you read around it. Mm. And, and it doesn't matter whether you, you are, you are happy to engage in what they're revealing of the, the knowledge of, of, the, of the heavenly realms, or if you're just like, okay, I just want to go be with Father right now, the, whatever lesson that was there to be learned will be imparted into, the, into your spirit and will be used at a later time to advance the kingdom of God in a way which um, I do have a few stories actually as examples, but um, I'll just quickly go through one as an example. Uh, so God would constantly take me into experiences of walking through mansions, people's mansions. And it was often people I knew. So I had a relationship with them and he would permit me to see into their mansion. And when I saw objects in their mansion, sentimental objects, I would relay it to them. And they would say, how did you know that's in my mansion? I have been praying and asking for God to put that in my mansion and only he knows. Okay. And, it, and I would be able to describe these objects in great detail, in color, in shape, in form. Um, and and it, it was just incredible. And he would also show me sort of a distance from their mansion. There were objects and um, places you could explore. And, I, and, and he took me to one and he said, well, you need to ask your friend what is in this place. And I went back to my friend and I said, okay, so in heaven, there's your house. And and just up up the by the trees and the, and the forest, there is there is this place. Um, and Jesus would not let me in, but he told me that you knew what was in there. And they said, "I can't I can't keep anything secret from you. Jesus tells you everything." <laughs> I have been praying and praying and praying with Jesus only that in that place is stored some very secret things for me. And it's it's up that trail that I've planned in my heavenly. I've been asking for this, this heavenly plan for me, for my house and my garden. And, and you just can't make this stuff up. It's just, it, it's, and, and so that gave me the courage to know that these revelations, there was real substance to them. Mm -hmm. um, and just in learning about that with my friends in a fun way, Jesus then later, about six months later, gave me a very sensitive revelation for other friends. And this revelation, it's the sort of stuff, if you go to prophetic um, training, they say it's one of the things you do not, never prophesy over people. Now, I approach this sensitively because I knew my friends. I had a relationship with them. I had a very deep relationship with them. And I, I approached it tentatively and said, look, I've had this revelation. Do you give me permission to share? And I started sharing and I said, at any point, you can ask me to stop because I knew prophetic protocol, but they kept in encouraging me to share. And I would intimately say, do you want me to continue? Do you want me to continue? Just keep checking in to protect mm -hmm. their hearts. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that actually by sharing this deep revelation of what was waiting for them in the heavenly realms had brought them healing that they had carried hurt and shame and guilt for 20 years. And they said that I saw a great accuracy something for them that it ha had bound them in in wondering is, is there redemption in that situation and so it brought them mm. a circle with healing into that and oh, it was released and they were their faces lit up Ooh. and so that's what i mean it's like all of this stuff it's it's just for training so that you could actually going back to that thing building the house of god building and beautifying and adorning each other's hearts that we may encourage and strengthen one another into the fervor and deeper beauty of God and his love. Mm. And so those people, as an example, were able to walk through that, um, that sort of guilt and shame and into deeper love of God. It mm -hmm. beautified their relationship with the Lord and drew them into deeper love and affection of him. Mm -hmm. And that's what the goal is. It is helping each other to grow deeper and deeper in love with Jesus. Mm. and that's the goal of understanding the mysteries of heaven mm. oh that's brilliant Lee thank you that's just wonderful have you ever found that in, in, in these things I mean lately I, I, I don't know I just seem to be coming across lots of things that I become con that are out there in the body of Christ but I just think this is wrong <laughs> for whatever reason yeah it's um, um, and I, yeah I some of them ancient, some of them less so. Okay. And, 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 and I just, and I think, it just feels like it's so easy to be deceived. Mm. Um, 
and 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 how does what's the interplay that you would you'd kind of has, has there ever been anything that you've you've believed strongly that in one of these things God's been able to say actually you know what you've got completely the wrong end of the stick here and then he's shown you or you've been able to find in scripture mm. I thought scripture said this but actually I now see you know yeah there's it's for me it's a constant journey of reassessing my understanding <laughs> mm. uh, the deeper I get in my revelation I don't just go on the experience I always weigh it back with the scriptures Mm. I find it, it sort of leads the way to opening up into deeper understanding than I had before. And I constantly find um, that I have to reassess everything that I've thought. And it expands my heart into a deeper understanding of him. Mm. One example is um, the seven spirits of God. When he started to download a revelation of that into me, I, I just, I, I was out of it for three or four days with the, the change in my mindset, it, it was mind blowing. And, and it's one of the sessions that I hope to go through at, at a later date is exploring that revelation of the seven spirits of God dwelling in the fire stones of God that it talks about in the Old Testament and just exploring the whole, the whole diversity of the Holy Spirit and what are these divine spirits of God. Um, I just want to explore that on another conversation, actually. Mm, um, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just conscious of the time. Um, and yeah. I, I want to honor um, people's time with this because I did say it would be an hour and a half. And I want to thank you all for coming. It's been so good to share this with you. So good to hear you all as well and, and hear your experiences and your thoughts and, and just to hear your hearts. It's so beautiful. Um, and uh, so some conversation ideas that we've got coming up are exploring the blood of Jesus, both from a sacrificial point of view and a mystery. What does it actually mean in the spirit realms and how does it impact? How does it tie into the transformation of the earth that we've read in, in Psalm 2? Um, and how does it link back to what happened in Genesis in the fall to the restoration of the, the entire world? Because Jesus came to save the world, is what it says. So um, that's that. That's probably going to be the next conversation: the blood of Jesus. 